It's been a run, so let's talk about it. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for Supernatural Season 15. Now, before we get into any of the technical, first off, let us all just appreciate the absolute incredible feat that this show accomplished. Nowhere in a million years did I feel or believe that this show could go as long as it did. And while I may have had my issues with it over the last few seasons, I am not going to deny that I will miss it. My Thursdays from here on out will never be the same. But there still needs to be something said about the last season of this show. Is it the worst season? No. But it becomes so hard to defend it when there was a massive drop in quality. And this was pretty much elevated by the last three seasons before it. Season 12, season 13, and especially season 14 really established the idea that this show was stealing from fan fiction. Not literally stealing it, but certainly taking a lot of elements and story writing from fan fiction. And I'm not saying that all fan fiction is bad, but there is obviously a lot out there that don't have proper grammar structure and proper storytelling. It's more so mythos and just, oh, that's a cool idea, but not anything actually really well thought out. And that's what season 15 is, and it's what the last few seasons have been. I can even say that it's almost lower than fan fiction because the amount of retcons that happen in this season, along with the entire Chuck God being a villain retcon, were so blatant and so obvious, I constantly had you guys, or people, other people commenting on the videos saying, hey, yeah, that just got retcon. Hey, yeah, that just got retcon. And there are things that are easily viewable from the wiki on the Supernatural website. The Supernatural Wikipedia is a wealth of knowledge about this show, and the writers don't even use it. They don't even know it. The retconning of monsters, lore, vampires, everything in this show was so willy-nilly at this point that one of the writers, Eugene Ross Moss, or Eugene Mossing, whatever, she just was retconning things left and right. Aside from that, let's actually talk about what this season was. It was a weird reattempt at Lucifer, but being God, and just the idea of an unbeatable villain who just so happens to act like a child. For those of you who still believe that this was originally intended, no. I can prove this to you. For the last seven seasons, everyone who has worked on that show thought that that season they were working on was the last one up until three about maybe a month or two prior before the ending before they finished filming they knew that they were being renewed you know how difficult it is to try and write a story that can't end but also can end but has to be left just a little bit open enough that it can continue on and then imagine doing that for 10 years that's what Supernatural has been for the last 10 years. Just a somehow ability to continue on to the next thing. It's why there was never any crossover. That's why we never got any storyline like that of, of 1 through 5. And there was a lot of bad, guys. There was a lot of bad episodes in this season. Particularly how we started off with the whole hell rising up and the most ridiculous conclusion when they came across a car that had blood in it and all of a sudden they just realized hey all the things that we've fought over the years are coming back from the flimsiest conclusion ever uh, i need my ice cream for this because this has actually been i've been thinking about this for the last few days yes there were some decent episodes i even wrote my list here of ones that i thought were decent the first good episode of this season was the episode that dean or sorry jensen directed with the one with the kid vampire and then we had eileen coming back eileen's episode return is the first six out of seven i've given this show in so long it was such a good episode the use of witches in it i liked everything about um rowena's kind of secret uh whole area here and having sam be the one who could go and get these things and the weird kind of spells traps that were in the house the only thing that was really stupid about it was how bad the music was in that episode and how bad the choreography was when dean shoots the girl falls to the ground everyone's like okay oh yeah we have to kill this guy and dean's like yeah i'm just been waiting for someone to take my gun for the last five minutes and then we had the episode where michael and Adam rose and we got to meet them again. Not like that actually became anything of any importance later on. Holy shit, I actually admit that's one of the biggest letdowns of this season. I was expecting something, 
anything from this character's return, considering how long we have actually talked about it. And I thought that of all the returns, after Lucifer and God were revealed, it's like, okay, they're never gonna bring up Adam. That's just, that's just too out there of an idea. And they did it. And they did fucking nothing with it. Absolutely nothing. Sorry, that was just one story aspect that I did not like. And I was way more forgiving of that in the finale, well, episode 19, than I should have been. But holy shit, was I forgiving of that aspect being completely wasted. And that's something that this season had a lot of, was just a lot of going back and forth between being, oh yeah, this is a good idea, to oh no, this is actually not a good idea, let's drop it. That was something that was very bad in season 14. It wasn't bad as, as bad in this season, but the whole god army coming out of the whole thing, that was resolved incredibly quickly. And the amount of filler episodes in this season is staggeringly horrible. What was it with the last four, in the last seven episodes that we got, essentially three of them were filler episodes. The weird Miss Holiday one, the one with the Baba Yaga, the one with Cass and, and, and Jack help going after the psychotic daughter Ripper 7 ripoff. What was with the filler episodes in this season? You didn't need any of them. Oh, and the worst filler episode of this entire show, okay, that's a bit of a stretch, but of this entire season was Last Call. And this has an 8.5 on IMDb. I don't know how this episode has that rating. It is a terrible episode. It is once again this stupid trope of Dean saying, hey, a friend of mine who I've never mentioned before, but apparently I have very good ties with, even though I am now double the amount of time that it's been since I've seen this guy. It's been literal decades, but I'm like, hey, buddy. And then it's just an excuse for me to sing songs and drink beer, even though this is the complete opposite of what my character has been. Like this development isn't development. It's the actual actor getting to do what he wants. Maybe that's what they all wanted to do, and sure, that's a fun... No, no, it's not. It's not story-related. It was such a bad episode. It was just a massive squee-fest. And maybe the ones who go to the shows are all cool about that, but that's not what I was in for. And then there was the whole idea of them not having their luck anymore, which on paper is a funny short joke, especially for the car. It essentially works for the car and for Dean's dental work. But otherwise, everything else was just terrible about it. I feel a setup so they could kind of make the rusty nail make sense. But I just thought that's like, you know, what they're, they've done. They know they don't have to worry about anything anymore. They could have used something better than a rusty nail. But whatever, whatever things are done, things are done. I'm getting this upset because it is over. It is something that I'm not going to be able to talk about, at least in a new aspect anymore. And I just kind of wish that they had a little bit more effort. You could see that they were kind of lacking in certain aspects. The hair and makeup team were just lazy, and especially in the final episode. Some of the blocking in most episodes wasn't the greatest. Apparently, in the first three episodes, the area where they shot, they nearly burnt it to the ground. And when I mean burnt, not physically like caught on fire, I mean they pissed off everyone by doing a very, very poor job of letting everyone know, hey, we're gonna shut down this entire area. Oh, well, we're not gonna do a good job about it, and we're gonna piss everyone off. I'm happy that we got a conclusion that wasn't terrible. I am appreciative of that. I am a bit upset about certain aspects never being fully realized. Obviously, I know COVID was, a re was something that affected, but really the only person, the only person who got proper conclusion, the two people actually, was Garth and Ketch, who died. Thankfully, holy shit, I've wanted that character to actually die die for so long. Funny enough, it's the part that I remember the most about the beginning of the season. Aside from the pool game, which if I could say that there is the, the, there is an episode that's really good in terms of just being a, a giant homage to the show was pool, the pool game episode. And it's a bit cheesy, but this is the very thing that got the boys money. This is the very idea concept that got them by when they first started, before they had MacGuffin everything. This was what they would do, they would hustle. I liked that the very thing that kept them going was the thing that they needed to rely on to survive. I like that aspect. It does buy into the whole Chuck thing, which I'll just get this out of the way. I did not like Chuck as a villain. I thought it was very childish. I thought it was very strange that Rob Benedict acted 
as childishly as he did, he reminded me of Lex Luthor by Jesse Eisenberg. I really thought The Empty was going to be the villain of this season. I really thought The Empty was going to push God out, like be the tyrannical. Like Chuck would be like, oh yeah, maybe I've done wrong. And then The Empty would come in and become the main antagonist and they'd have to try and fight it because this was something that literally we don't know anything about. It's just a MacGuffin thing that Dab created in season 13, who also leading into Castiel, if that's the end of Castiel, I know that that's that's the only depressing thing of this entire show. That's the only person who got a sad ending. Yeah, he died saving Dean's life. And well, we're not going to talk about that other aspect because if there was ever a thing that's called bait, that was bait. That was bait. I don't know. I thought Castiel had kind of an unceremonious uh, ending. And I think that's why maybe Misha was so sad because he couldn't be there for that. Dab did what he could. I didn't think Dab really had a chance at all, chance in hell, at ending the show, anything above okay, and that's what he got. I'm happy that's what we got, because if we had gotten what I expected, I expected it to be a fucking train wreck. And I know there's people out there who believe that this ending was a train wreck, and I don't disagree with you, especially if you left the show early on, like season six, season seven, and then came back, the degrade in the of quality had really really dipped and I only really saw it when I started reviewing the earlier seasons I was such a constant viewer of it that I could see the progression and I don't know how people don't see it when they keep watching when they binge watch it binge watch it they have to know that there all of a sudden is a quality change they have to I don't know how they couldn't Especially with the passing of Kim Manners. You never got to episodes as directed as well as the ones that directed by Kim Manners. He was great. And he's going to pass away in the season that I'm reviewing, which is going to suck. It's not as bad as season 14. Holy shit, was it close. Because I did the math, and out of 140, which was the score, it got a 69. It essentially got a 4.9 out of 100. It failed a passing grade. That sucks. Like the amount of positive episodes uh, are very few. For instance, here's the stretch that I was talking about. It's season, uh, episode 12, got a four to seven. 13, two out of seven. 14, two out of seven. 15, three out of seven. 16, two out of seven. 17, five out of seven. That was a good episode. That was a prelude towards like the triple part of the finale. 18, three out of seven. 19, three out of seven. It just completely dropped it in the last seven episodes. It was unfortunate that those were delayed by COVID, but I think that I still would have felt as badly about those episodes as I did. Now, sorry, just a little bit of a jump cut here because I, I couldn't finish the video because I just got on a tangent and I wanted to take a step back and think about it more. But before I give my rating, I'm going to look at the polls and see what you guys said because I asked you guys, I wanted you to give your own sort of interpretation and these were the categories here. And as you can see, these are the results. I'll start from least to work uh, to most. Uh, you guys at nine percent said that it was a five or a six with a season one to five caliber, and then in fourth place was Swan Song Bart Part Du of a seven ten percent. Don't know what you're smoking there, but whichever that's up your choice. The number two is two slash three purgatory slash hell whichever lineup is longer that was 15 percent and then the one that i kind of worried that was going to take it but thankfully it didn't was a one out of seven which belongs in the empty only a 19 percent in second place and then the very very obvious and uh forward ahead winner is a four halfway there living on a prayer I, I kind of worry that you guys chose that answer because of how I wrote it rather than the actual four, but that is what you guys thought at 47%. That was the majority, and this had like 200 and something, 263 votes. That's crazy. Now, I didn't realize I'd get so many good comments from you guys too, though, so I'm going to read those in a different video because I already know that I've rambled on enough. But in the end, my rating for Supernatural Season 15 Funny enough, actually, I'm going to go exactly with what I said before because I thought that maybe I was wrong with what I said earlier. But nope, I'm going to cut back to me when I did the review last night. I've been sitting on a three for the last while. This is the one time I'm going to do it because I've been committed to this show for so long. Season 15, 
of Supernatural gets a 2.5 out of 7. That's the first time I've ever done a 0.5. Ever. Ever. But I can't give it a 3 because of how crap it was. But it wasn't crappy enough to be a 2 out of 7. <sighs> It's hard to say. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. For those of you who did leave a comment, don't worry, I will be doing a comment read-through soon. And then I'm going to also find out a way to do a poll for the top five best and worst episodes. So if you guys have any suggestions of poll websites, please send them my way. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this adventure for the last year and some of you the last five years it's crazy to think that y'all have been listening to me talk about this show for as long as you have and i thank you so much and i hope you'll join me on a bit of a retrospective as we continue from season four all the way back to the end of season 10 where i started we might get there hopefully in a couple of years anyways guys that's all for me i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching the video my name is nitz and you might remember me from the animated cult classic tv show undergrads it's been a while but I'm happy to say The Click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.